Um, big news coming out of the county. It's official, right? It's Starting official. December 1st, you must be 21 years of old to buy a vape cigarette or a regular cigarette. Yeah, so what uh, the FDA defines is tobacco products and uh, that it does include the, the vaping uh, products. Yeah. So changed from 18 to 21. Yeah. Uh, and so you look to see the city do something and St. Charles County do something at some point. Well, I think that's... Um, you know, there, there's. I was at the meeting last night, and there's different arguments. Uh, one of the arguments, so well, kids are going to get it anyway. Uh, uh, I mean, kids are pretty resourceful, so they're going to get it anyway. Right. But uh, certainly, having the the city, uh, St. Charles County, and other adjoining counties follow suit does make a little sense. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, we're trying to look out for the future health of of the people around here. Yeah. Um, interesting. We'll see how all that shakes out. All right. Uh, some news coming out of. Um the FDA, explain to me why we shouldn't use this microbiome, micro, anti, antimicrobial soap. Well, maybe you shouldn't use it because you can't say it. <laughs> All right, doctor, you haven't been on the show long enough to start making fun of me yet. You're it's, still on your probationary period. It's just an observation, but you know, the, I, I think I think the concept is uh, it, it's interesting to me. Um, this is an industry that's sort of made up by marketing. Uh, this whole antimicrobial industry right. of, oh, bacteria is bad and it kills us. And all of a sudden, all this stuff comes out. So you got all these hand washes and these hand sanitizers and everybody's got something like hanging off of their purse or their backpack or something like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, it turns out the FDA started looking at many of these and uh, there's chemicals in many of these that have not passed what uh, you, know, you would call from the FDA the sniff test. And the FDA has two missions. One, uh, products need to be able to prove that they're reasonably safe for people to use. So it, there's, a, there's a concept that there's a safe uh, issue with long-term exposure. So there's no harm that's caused by these products. And two is, are they effective? So safety and ef efficacy. Efficacy means, does it actually do what it's supposed to do? Right. Uh, the chemicals that were questioned in this instance have a lot to do with the fact that these companies were not able to provide data that there was long-term safety in exposure. Uh, so the whole concept goes back to, well, what do I do? Soap and water is the most effective way <laughs> to get rid of germs. <laughs> Regular soap. It makes sense. And regular water. You don't need anything fancy. Yeah. You don't need fancy words. You just need soap and water. But, you know, I was a huge, big user of those antibacterial soaps, only because I'm I'm really just a, a horrible, I'm just a germaphobe. So I thought having that extra layer of protection, but some, I was reading also that it could actually affect uh, those who are using um, certain hormones and... So these yeah, things, like these chemicals potentially are absorbed through your skin, and, uh, you know, that's the deal with the question of safety. Uh, mm -hmm. If we can't prove that over the long term, you know, those are actually not an issue in, you know, any other thing that somebody might be on or, uh, you know, what happens to your skin over the long term or, or does there, there, are there chemicals that build up in the body? They can't prove that. Now... It wasn't proven that these things are all harmful. So, I mean, I don't know if we need to just necessarily uh, get a wastebasket and throw all those things in it. But if you're a germaphobe, that's fine. Soap and water is great. They're but they're, they're, they're playing on her fears, though. That's the idea. That's the marketing part, right? There was another part yeah. of this that was interesting, and that was they said that these soaps, um, antibiotics, right? And and the overprescription of antibiotics and that the the bugs change so that they are drug resistant. Are these soaps um, harmful to that side of this story? There's a concern that uh, a couple of the chemicals that were there are 19 chemicals that um, the FDA had issue with in various different products. And so there was a concern with a couple of them that there may be an issue with long-term exposure to those chemicals that there could also be an increase in antibiotic resistance or, or sort of you know promoting the development of superbugs so you kill off the ones that are easily kill off right. and then the ones that are that are the strongest there will continue to survive and, and live the longest what about hand sanitizer and all that type of stuff the same kind of stuff 
so the these the the I don't think the consumers need to worry about anything. The FDA basically mandated to the companies they're no longer uh, able to manufacture and sell products with these chemicals in it. And they have a certain amount of time right. that they have to comply with this. There's two other chemicals that uh, uh, are proven to be question marks. And those companies have a one-year time period to be able to prove uh, at least safety with those. And if they can't do that, then I think that's going to... Uh, you know, those two will add to the 19, and they'll be 21 by this time next year. Dr. Michael Lim continues to be on double secret probation after making fun of me earlier in this segment. <laughs> Cardiologist with Not Slough so Care <laughs> at SSM Health Slough Hospital. Doctor, thanks for coming in. Thanks a lot. Have you a good it. day. 821, Big 550, KTRS. Outdoor living, ladies and gentlemen. You want a new deck for 2017? How'd you like to pay 2016 prices? Now, look, the summer's over with, but we're still going to have a great fall. Maybe, just maybe...